Hi, I am Sirius Kauking and welcome to this video tutorial on how to build a successful park in Planet Coaster with the working economy. Now this is just a quick example that I wanted to show, which is a park that was built on the hardest difficulty in the game. As you can see, there is definitely the possibility to do whatever you want, make it very beautiful uh, without compromising just because you have an, an economy. In fact, uh, decoration is part of the process, I'm going to show you in a moment. But uh, yeah, let's start a new park right away. So first thing to note is there is a carrier mode, but I strongly not recommend it. It's kind of all over the place. It's not great. Um, it's just not as good as it was, you know, in uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and 2. Those were great games uh, for the campaign mode. But in this case, what you really want is the challenge mode. Now, a lot of people go into Sandbox because the reason is usually because I just want to build right away. I just... You know, I don't want to wait for this and that. But if you play challenge correctly, if you understand how it works, it can actually go quite fast. Uh, your money at some point goes just out of control. You make too much money. Like you, you can have enough money that you're not able to spend it. So um, really, challenge mode is just sandbox in disguise. In fact, it's the same maps same limitations which is basically none uh, you just gotta make it functional as well so yeah let's go in challenge um, you do whatever you want just a heads up city does take more resource on your computer than the other ones uh, and for that reason they also restricted the building area it's a it's a smaller park. If you plan on making something huge, which, you know, also takes a huge toll on your performance at some point, um, yeah, you'll want one of these instead. You can also go custom, it's the same thing. But uh, yeah, in this case, let's just go Alpine. And I'm not gonna show you harder because it's just much slower. Instead, I'm just gonna go in hard. So, the big difference between challenge and sandbox, obviously you have a working economy, but also you have these little challenges that pops once in a while. They're a great source of instant revenue. If you're in a rough patch, it's building gets slow. Uh, you can just fulfill one of those challenges. Usually it's easy, depends on what the challenge is, but uh, yeah, it can, definitely give you a good little boost, a uh, good little instant boost. So you'll notice that I paused the game. That helps, not for now. For now it really doesn't matter, but later in the game it makes a difference where uh, if you have loans, for example, especially when you just started, you take a loan because, well, you can't really build much with $2,000. Um, so, pausing the game is sort of a good habit at this point. So, first thing first, this entrance is not good. It's very important to note, uh, in, the, in the future, when your park gets big, you'll have a lot of people going in and out, even though you don't notice it in the guest count. Uh, people actually do go in and out and if it's only a single four meter wide gate it, There's going to be a traffic jam here Especially because uh, when it's a single three uh, four meter wide gate This actually has a collision on the side. So it's more like three meter wide gate It's really hard to funnel a lot of people at the same time uh, most of the time it's gonna be fine, but it can definitely create problems. So, 
Uh, what you want to do, you click on that, is it? Just a sec, it's loading. So in here, shops and facilities, you can create your own. You can add some. Uh, two is good. Why not build three just for this, just for the fun of it? Two, two is usually good. And uh, I'm not gonna bother in making like the perfect path system today. Uh, I could show you that in details, but I mean, I'm, you know, let's just make it quick. Uh, curb, I didn't have that disabled. All right, so that should be much better already. Um, there we go. Now, for your main path, uh, what I recommend is 8 meter wide if you don't have any picnic benches. If you have picnic benches, uh, it's gonna take away from the amount of space available to your people. And then in these areas, you want to go at least 10 meter. You can go more than that if you select grid, then you can do as wide as you want. I suggest 10 to 12 meters actually for areas with a picnic table. So in this case, I'm just gonna close that off like this. There we go. It's not really great. I. That's another thing. I don't plan on making a beautiful park. I'm just gonna go with basic functionalities here. So that would be a reasonable main path kind of it's pretty ugly whatever first thing you want to do obviously you want to build a ride but if you build one of those rides you're gonna have a slow economy those are not your big money maker your big money maker right now well you don't have any track rides if you have DLCs, you may have access to more stuff. This is just the uh, original game, no DLC, no anything. Uh, so there is no track ride available right now. Where you want to go is coasters. This is your big money maker. Start with a coaster. I'm actually gonna go into detail on how to make a good roller coaster in my other DV video linked in the description, by the way. Uh, that would be my roller coaster tutorial video. Uh, but right now, I'm just gonna build something quick just so it is functional and you know, you have a start, starting economy. Uh, but with that, you don't, you can't really build a good one. So, first, you want to go in park management and uh, take a loan in the finance section. Loan. Um, you'll notice that the biggest that the loan is, lowest the interest. So it's usually better to start with a big loan. There is nothing stopping you from taking both. And you can only take one of each. So keep that in mind. Right now, that's your maximum amount of money. It's not going to go better than that. We are going to unpause, and right now we need to be stingy on our economy, so reduce the amount per month to the minimum. That will help you. In the long run, you're going to pay more money. You're going to pay more uh, interest, more... Uh, well, yeah, you're going to pay more money. But in the short run, you're going to pay less. And right now, we only need the short run. As soon as we start making profit, then we can start paying off the loan. So, roller coaster. Um, for some reason, this one tends to make less profit than this one. Uh, don't pay attention to the amount cost that they suggest there. I I have no idea where that amount comes from. It's very random. Um, but yeah, let's start with this. So I'm not going to make the most optimal uh, 
station placement. However, there is one thing I can do here. Let's place it like this. Advanced move. Place it a little bit up. Um, something that I will tell you right now is you're gonna want to do uh, you're gonna want to optimize your track scenery rating and a good trick for that is you build your roller coaster above the rest of your park uh, because you're gonna decorate the rest of your park right any tree any uh, building walls any things like that, it all counts. Uh, even the, the benches and the garbages, they all count toward the scenery rating of things. So your track scenery rating will go up in this case. Uh, just just the fact that you're building near the rest of your park. The roller coaster length, I'm gonna go in detail in my other video, like I was saying. So right now I'm just gonna do a quick build randomized, uh, kind of randomized, you know, I'm not really going to pay attention to details. Uh, you also don't want to go too big right away because of your budget limit, of course. Here, that looks good. And also, keep in mind, you know, make it the way you want it. You do need to have a good economy with this, but like good stats and stuff but in the end this game is really about what you want to do you know it's your own artistic expression everything so don't be afraid to experiment try different things here let's do uh, why not the corkscrew right here um, yeah, there are predetermined loops, rolls, things like that. Um, actually, yeah, I could... No, yeah, I'll, I'll just make it myself. So, as soon as you start experimenting a little bit, you realize that you can build your own corkscrews, your own loops, your own everything. Um, just make sure that your first roller coaster is big enough. Because that's one of the things that affect uh, the price. There are the stats, there are the track scenery rating, but also the track length. I tried building the smallest roller coaster I ever could, which I, it was very successful. It had great stats, but the value was much lower. That's something that I discovered right there. You know. Um, but yeah, there is, of course, a budget limit right now. Can't go too crazy. Uh, angle snap. Oh, that's good. Other way. Zero. Uh, yeah, zero. There we go down whoops accidental click there Go down plus come on I think I might be too close here oh uh, no I think it's good putting back the angle snap Ooh, this is like really really tight but it's good enough um so sometimes you'll have the supports like that that looks very stupid you can always just build your own custom supports which is uh, incidentally I, I can't speak right now I just happen to also be making a video on how to build custom supports so yeah <laughs> Here, let's just remove that really hate it um, also, um, at this point I would like to test, this might even be too high, so, when you build a roller coaster, that's something that I also 
talk about in my other video on how to build roller coasters, you want to test right away. I've already built a bunch of stuff without testing. This might be a bad roller coaster. Uh, you know what? I don't like chains that are this slow. I'll just put the chains a bit higher. Here, let's put it at 14. That should be good. So, um, always pay attention to these stats here. Excitement, fear, and nausea. Obviously, those are a result of your lateral, vertical, and forward g-force and speed. But, uh, that's a good indicator right there. I'm gonna pause... Okay, that's not too much. That's good. That's the limit, so I'm good. I can keep going this way. All right, cool. I'm gonna. I'm not also gonna try to make the best stats ever. I mean, I can make really, really good roller coaster, but I'm. I'm not trying to make the best. I'm just trying to make something quick. So. This is way too high. this let's put it a little bit of bank uh, actually you know this is still too high I did like that but here you go like this a little bit of bank is that yeah okay for a moment it looked uh, wrong Zero. It's hello. Make it smaller. Okay. Um, I'm heading toward the end right now, and I don't have enough length. This roller coaster would be very low value right now. So I'm just gonna extend this a tiny bit here. Let's make it pass through the uh, through the loop like this. If you ever get a uh, an area that's too tight. It has bad stats. It's a lot of fear, a lot of nausea. Usually what you have is a turn that's too tight or bottom of a hill that's too tight. Just make it uh, calmer. That's all you really need to do. It's all about the G-force. And if the, if the turn or the slope is smooth, you know, wide. Make it wide. It solves a lot of issues. Uh, let's go around this way. Also, I don't like this. Like this is better. Oh yeah, here, let's do this. And like this. As you can tell, I often get carried away a little bit when building roller coasters. Even if I want to do something quick, I tend to take my time and do something fun. Uh, by the way, you see there that I could have built into the ground. That's because I have the collisions disabled. But I will always respect my collisions visually. Um, now I'm gonna head to the end here. I'm just not sure how much speed I have left, so I'm gonna do this test again. Fast forward this. Alright, slow down here. Gonna look at the stats. 
that's a low amount of excitement at this point. But I'm okay with it. Alright, I got... So, 80 at the bottom here. 77. I'm gonna go ahead and... That was... How, how much was that again? Heat maps. Heat maps are very useful. Uh huh. 45. That's actually a good number. 45 kilometers per hour is usually a good number because you can do tight turns on that. It's not gonna go. Uh, it's not gonna ruin your stats. So I'm gonna try to aim for that height here. About 22 meters. Yeah, that should be good. Let's uh, do this. Make it tight here. And uh, how about a last like this? Oh, yeah, okay, okay. I got an idea gonna do this. Also, um, I sort of started building right next to my entrance. That's not always the best idea ever. You tend to run out of space. I strongly suggest to take more space than what I did right there. And that's just a bad habit that I have personally. I always do that. I build right next to my entrance and then I regret it because I'm running out of space. <laughs> Um, like this, like this, that should be good, um, actually, before I do that, I kind of want to give it a bit of banking here, so, the way I'm seeing it right now is I'm going to build a park entrance, like not just these gates. I'm actually going to decorate this thing. So in that case, I can use that to decorate the ride. Synergize, basically. Uh, and when you finish here, you'll want to usually you want to make it bit smoother than that. So like this should be good. I think it's good. Alright. Let's do the real test. Test. Looking at it at the same time. So once again I was building as much on pause as possible. And the reason for that is because of loan interest. We do have loans right now. We don't want the loan interest to stack up. Uh, you know, try to be stingy. I forgot to do that. So uh, keep in mind for the ratings, it's your average that count. So you can have small moments of the excitement being low, the nausea being high, things like that. It's still fine, as long as your average is good. In this case, I feel like the average is going to be a bit low, in fact. It's kind of a boring ride. Eh, good enough. It's obvious, it's Honestly, not my best stats ever, but I'm okay with it. Uh, don't forget to place an entrance and an exit. I go over the optimal positioning of entrances and exit in my roller coaster building video. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to do this. It's also quite far from the road right now. Keep in mind. Uh, guests don't like very long queue. Uh, it's not a real life park, right? Everything is to scale to what the guests enjoy and don't enjoy. And um, like, it, it, 
in this game, if someone is waiting in line for like an hour, an hour could be the entire time that they spend in the, in the park because it's an hour in real life. It's not an hour in the game. So try to make your queue short. Um, usually what you want for queue length is uh, there should be enough people to fit in the ride between twice and four times. And uh, there are only 20 seats here. Yeah, 20. So don't make it too long. I'm gonna have uh, path supports, obviously, curved slopes. There we go. That should be good. Uh, make sure you don't have flattened terrain enabled. Flattened terrain sucks. It's the worst it it is a game breaking if you have a relatively flat terrain it should be good but as soon as you go uh, as soon as you do the smallest amount of terraforming you are doomed if you have flattened terrain on uh, yeah exit path should be four meter right wide The exit path, keep in mind that guests won't go there. They just exit, they go back to the main path. The guests are attracted in your park toward things that exist. They won't go in a, an area with nothing. So nobody's gonna go in through the exit path. So the exit path can definitely be 4 meter wide and you're good to go. Um, now, something that is very important, the ride settings. By default, it will always be standard. Uh, block section, you'll need a lot of block section pieces for this to work properly. Uh, I go into detail in my other video, but basically, I don't suggest it. Lapping is good if you have a ride that has boosters, like a linear well, actually, a good example would be this. A linear synchronous motor type boosters are great with lapping because your ride doesn't stop in between each lap. There's no downtime, so you can gain even more speed on the second time. Uh, where this is really important, the load rules. By default, it's always going to be these. And they actually make no sense. It's good enough, but you want to change that. So, minimum rider load. What you want to do is full load. The game will wait as much as possible until your ride is full. This obviously helps if you have a lot of guests. You don't want the ride to start with being half full when you have a lot of people winning in time. Uh, but also there's a minimum wait of a minute. That means if you have four times your load in your queue length, then people are going to be forced to wait an extra four minutes for no reason. So you want to remove the minimal time which is fine, you don't need a minimal time if you're waiting for full load anyway. If you're waiting for any load, then yes, you need a minimum wait time. So you want to remove the minimum waiting time and maximum waiting time also, that's a long time, honestly. Uh, I usually go for 80 seconds. This depends on how many people are needed in your ride, how long it usually takes for the ride to fill up, uh, some calm rides sometimes will take a bunch of time to fill up just because there's a lot of seats people need to move from the back of the line to the front so be your own judge on that minimum departure 
you don't need to touch that in this case. Uh, if you have multiple trains, this can be very useful. Don't block sections. Never use don't block section station. Uh, because don't block station, what happens is if there's a second train, the first train will go right away, even if it's empty. So most of the time, what it will do is your ride will run with no guests on it and everybody will wait forever in line. So don't use the don't block station option. It's a, it's, it's a bad thing. So that right there, this is what how I usually do it. It works for any and every ride. Um, in some case, like I said, if you have, a, for example, a track ride with lots of small trains, then you might want to have a minimum waiting time and a shorter, much shorter maximum waiting time. So that should be good. Uh, your next thing that you need to worry about is your Q scenery rating. Now, in this case, I'm not going to make it pretty. In fact, I really don't care. This park is going to look horrible. It's going to be a bit funny. Um, but, yeah, you want to fill that up. And so I'm going to just put a bunch of park benches here. Bunch of garbage. Here, this one is good. Okay, and already we got 9%. It's not a lot, but it's a start. So, uh, one thing that you might want to do is decorate your station itself. If you do this, start building on a grid. On the grid, actually. Um, it's going to snap your walls to the station. So, let's do that. Uh, you'll notice that there are pieces like this. Here, let's use a just brick. Let's use a classic brick or modern modern brick. Let's use modern bricks. Uh, you'll notice that these pieces here have a, a little cut corner. It's for stations, specifically for stations. Whoops. Also, um, if you're building with an economy, that's a little something to note. If you place a piece of wall, or well, anything, it costs you money. Then if you delete it, you don't get the same amount of money back. What you want to do is undo. If you undo, it's the same amount. So undo is a very important thing when using when building with an economy. Ultimately, you're gonna make lots of money at some point. You're not gonna care anymore. Right now, you kinda do care. There we go. Uh, here, let's build lower. These are also meant for this right there. That's a two meter piece, I believe. Yes, it is. So, building your station like this actually has a huge impact on your QC and your rating. And also, if your track passes nearby, um, it also has an impact on the, Q on the track scenery your rating. So, it's a good thing to do these. Probably just do this. Duplicate. Flip it around. There you go. And one more. One more time. There we go. Yep. Sweet. Uh, let's add a flat roof. Make it simple. Uh, concrete. Why not? Rough concrete. That is beautiful, isn't it? High quality building right there. Purely artistic. Loving it, of course. Um, and there you go. Already 43% is going a lot up. 
Uh, your track scenery rating. This is in testing results. Track scenery rating will not update after the ride, before the ride had had a full cycle. So that's a little something to keep in mind. Um, here, let's add a bit of beautiful stuff here. Uh, props. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna remove position snap. This is beautiful. Yeah. I'm gonna have, uh, I think it's an animatronics. Yes, confetti cannon. So lights and animatronics actually has a huge impact on scenery compared to uh, just regular building stuff. Also light, that's another thing. Uh, if you want your park to be pretty at night, don't forget to put lights. As you can see, my choice is a bit limited right now because I got no research done. Uh, whoops, I'm in the building right now. I'm gonna have a few of these throughout the park. Here, let's put it at night so I can see. Yeah, there we go. Over there, I'm gonna have my park entrance, so it doesn't matter. Your scenery also affects um, the stat of your park. Guests have a huge... Um, it makes a big impact on what the guest thinks about your park. So make sure to keep your park pretty. Why not add two more? There we go. Um, how are we on Q scenery rating now? Hey, 90% C. Confetti, lights, 90% already. I'm just gonna put a few more inside. Uh, when, by the way, when uh, turning your camera around, if you want this first person view kind of thing, press T. T to switch to first person view. All the shortcuts are, of course, listed in the game itself, in the settings. But, yeah. This one is just very useful. Oh, you know what? I don't like this. I'm gonna put it here. I mean, yeah, of course, I'm just building this sort of randomly. But I still want a minimum amount of aesthetics. I don't like it more like here there we go I believe we are now at 100% there we go so Q scenery rating has a huge impact on price so that's something you should worry about uh, track scenery rating it's more like a bonus um, also I just talked about day and night cycle there's a bit of park management you can do right here. Price, ticket prices. For some reason, it's in the ticket prices. Uh, never put any price here because the game wasn't really coded this way. It's broken. It's not really functional. It's not like in uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon. You want to keep that at zero dollar and raise the price of your rides instead. But uh, something you can do for performance reason, you can limit your maximum amount of guests and your opening and closing time. This is only visual. It does not affect the gameplay. In my case, I like to have a night and day cycle. So I like to put 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. You have a bit of night, but not too much. It's just right in my opinion. So yeah do that uh, now going back to finance we could pay off the small loan so I'm just gonna do it right away the big loan will stay with us for a while 
I will now show you, I am on pausing the game, and I will now show you how to adjust your price rides. Yeah, your rides prices. Bleh. Ah, bleh, bleh. So let's fast forward a little bit. Guests are gonna start to come in. There's only one ride, but it's good enough for now. So as guests go in, why did you not like? Whatever. Oh yeah, because these generated before the spark was open, that's why. Guests are finicky sometimes like that. Uh, so yeah, there's only one ride, people are not necessarily... Really? You also generated before? Okay, let's... Let's pass a few guests. Don't worry, it's gonna begin. People that are generated before the start, the park opens, sometimes, you know, they, they bug out. Um, but yeah, while we wait for actual guests to arrive, people that are actually gonna stay, uh, we're gonna need some facilities. I'm just gonna go in the blueprint in this case. Uh, maybe here, let's have some drinks. Uh, actually, let's extend the path here. Like I was saying, if you have some stalls, it's good to make it wider. Because you're gonna have picnic benches and stuff. Uh, picnic benches. Let's use these. Oh, wait. The ride is closed. Oh, my God. As you can tell, I make mistakes sometimes. That was terrible of me. In a video, in a tutorial video. So, um, don't forget to open your right. Kind of a big step here. <laughs> uh, oh, I also s forgot to show you um, the maintenance section. So, average reliability usually means it's going to break down a lot. If you have low reliability, there is nothing you can do about it. It sucks. If you have good reliability, then you want to leave it at 30 minutes. You want your mechanic to inspect often so that your wear and tear stays high. If it goes low, then it's going to break down a lot. Um, so yeah, inspection schedule, very important. Something that I forgot to tell you earlier. Uh, so price. When people get enter the ride, you click on them and you see these thoughts. It is cheap as chips, which means you can raise your price. Now, for a roller coaster, usually you want to adjust your price by one dollar each time. So eleven dollar. But in this case, I already know this ride. I can see it in my mind. It's gonna go for at least eighteen dollars, at least. Uh, keep in mind that the price will adjust on a curve. It's not gonna instantly go to the actual value of the ride, what it's really worth. It goes up and down slowly. So I did jump to $18. It's a big jump, but you know, it should be fine. Afterward, if I want to adjust, I'm going to adjust $1 each. Might have been a... There we go. Okay, right now, the price is good. Ah, uh, there you go. Now people are coming in. It is pricey. It's too pricey. Okay, let's go back to 16 then. Big spender, don't... If someone has, like, big spender or something like that, don't take their thoughts in, a ma in, in account. Uh, the price might be not the real value of the ride. So, already, looks like $16 is a good price. Uh, what do you mean the queue seems to go for it? It's too expensive. It's still good too, too expensive. I may have jumped too fast here. 
But yeah, usually this, it's that. You click on people, you look at their thoughts. Ah, uh, there you go. Now the value is rising above. I'm still gonna wait a little bit because some people might not be... That that one is now in old thoughts. Keep in mind, thoughts do change. There you go. Now it's starting to be good. So let's raise it to 16. Wait for the next one. Yeah, there are no shops yet. Just give me a moment. Well, as you can tell, my profit is already going up. So that's good news. By the way, people pay when they enter here, not when they enter there. So... You'll make money as soon as people enter the queue. Ah, there we go. Now you're going up to 17. This... I have a feeling that $18 is going to be the actual price. You know, raise it to 18. When you stop seeing anything about the prices, then you know it's the right price. Those are big spender, they don't count. Yep, this looks good. This looks good. Yeah, it has a low scenery rating, of course. Um, so just that, I already made money, as you can tell. I had 2,000 at the end of this ride. I'm now at 3. This is good news. So, your next, uh, your next step is building your first stalls. Which is what I was starting here. Uh, here's how it works. Before I put anything down, here's how it works. Your guests have these needs, obviously. Um, those are your big ones, of course. Like, don't forget to put restrooms. It's kind of a big thing. Uh, you'll want to satisfy their hunger. The hunger and their thirst is gonna go down by itself. Energy, you just need to put benches. And of course, happiness, well, you need to put rides, duh. Uh, so hunger and, and thirst is gonna go down. And as they eat food, thirst is gonna go down even more. So usually I like to put two drink stalls and one food stall in each area that I'm building stalls for. In this case, this is my little area. Uh, you don't want to put it too close to the park entrance. This is even pushing it. It's really close. And the reason for that is you want your guests to have the time to ride a few rides, explore the park a little bit. And then they're gonna go hungry, then they're gonna go thirsty, and then you need to put your food stalls. And it's also, um, there's also the gift shops. They're not gonna go buy any gift before they had a chance to have fun. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there are two categories, your food and your drinks. That's it. Anything that you research afterward, uh, like right now, right there, I have four types of food stalls. Any food stall is going to go in food. Even if this is Cosmic Cow ice cream, it counts as food. So if guests buy that, they get their food meter fills up, filled up. But that also means if you have a Chief Beef right next to a Cosmic Cow, it's a competition between the two. Guests don't care about what type of food that you make or what type of drink that you make. They just, they want one of either of them. They don't care which one it is. So don't make competition with yourself. Uh, if you want to have a bit of everything, you'll need to spread it out throughout your park. If you have just everything in one section, they're not gonna make profit. 
So here, let's do this. Pizza and cosmic cows. And uh, let's make it pretty. By the way, uh, these things are meant to fit right there. Okay. Just so you know. I did say I would use the pre-made ones, but you know what? I'm already building it. Oh no! Look what's happening! I'm building it! What? Here, let's make it like this. So I'm gonna make it very simple right now. Great. Now, I'm no longer playing on pause right now because we're already making enough money, it's fine. Um, something that's very important, your finance section. Well, actually, it would be an item for sale, never mind. Your item for sale. Um, these are the default prices. You can raise by 30%. And it's still gonna be... People are gonna buy it. Okay, that's my own observation. I tried. 40% uh, people start to be like, what the hell are these prices, right? Um, so, let's go 7.5 times 30%. So that would be 9 and 75. Um, eight dollars one times three percent that would be 10.4. So, you do want to do that, it's very profitable to do that. That would be 11 dollars. So after that, you can just sync the price, and if you just reuse your same type of stalls, you don't need to do it again. But yeah, do raise your price 30%. Same thing here, 30%. Well, that's 650. Don't need to. Don't need a calculator for that. Uh, if you want to go even more micromanagement, you can add extras. It tells you what make what it changes uh, some of them are good for like happiness stuff like that um, some of them are bad uh, yeah you'll have to look into these uh, I never actually tried these the thing is they add to the cost of the item they also add to the value I'm not sure how much and uh, everything, but it's just, it's something. If you want to explore it, have fun, you know? All right. Also, I'm still going to finish decorating that building because the ride is nearby. Like I was saying, it's going to add to the Q, to the track scenery rating. The track scenery rating raises the price through the roof real quick. So you do want to do something with that, if possible. Cosmic cow ice cream. Uh, no, that's a milkshake, right? Yeah, that's a milkshake. Milkshake. There we go. And the pizza pen. Oops. God dang it. There we go. Pizza. Uh, here, let's just use a big pizza. There we go. So that's my first stalls. Um, I eventually... So when you see people like this, uh, right now people were waiting for a while before eating. So there's going to be a big queue. Uh, or there's going to be missed sales. But once this stabilizes, people, uh, you'll see... Um, no, that's month profit. Which one is it? It's right there. There you go missed sales last month once this stabilizes you can tell if you have enough stalls from that number if you have missed sales that means uh, you don't have enough stalls there's too many people trying to use that stalls um, so 
next thing, these are your first stalls, but you need other stuff than that. Uh, we're gonna need to have a bathroom. Of course. Let's build it right here. Uh, also gonna need a ATM machine. Oh yeah, I don't have that researched yet. I'm gonna show you research in a moment. Uh, but yeah, we are going to need a staff building as well. This is a very important part of the game. Staff management. Very important part. Even if you play in sandbox, staff management is vital in this game. So, your staff actually has... Uh, can I select the employee? There you go. Your staff actually has a energy meter. When it's done, when it's too low, they go on break. Or just over time, they go on break at some point. And they need a staff building to go on break, to relax. So once they're gone, you need other staff to replace them. Now, if you go in staff management here, uh, here, let's select the vendors. You'll see that there are a roster assignment and the default is free roaming. But when you just build a building, the default is that building. That itself creates a problem. You want to put it to free roaming. It's very important. When, you're st when your park goes big enough, you actually want to create roasters and then you assign people to specific roasters. But it's very important, don't have people assigned to their specific buildings. It will create a problem when you have more stalls, when you have more staff. You'll want to uh, have a... let them be free. Uh, also, I don't have any garbage in that area, so let's just put a few bins here. Here, let's do this. And there's already a bit of litter, I believe. I thought I saw litter. I, I, I thought I saw litter. Maybe I just has hallucinated. That's all right. I can hallucinate. I'm allowed. Uh, but yeah, we will need janitors. As soon as you start having food, you'll need janitors. Here, let's do this. So let's hire some janitors. I'll have two. We also have a roller coaster, which means we will need a mechanic. And there are people in the park, which means we will need a security guard. Kind of a big thing. Kind of a big deal. Um, so yeah, park management, uh, staff building. The staff building. You'll see that the building scenery rating, uh, by the way, this is very hard to rise up to 100%, but it makes a difference. Uh, your staff will rest faster if they have a better scenery rating. They will also be happier. So, in this case, I will at least build a small building around it, make it look not too horrible. Let's go in modern. Um, here, let's do this actually. I think it's a good idea. Of course, uh, every time you decorate something, you know, you make it look the way you want to. There are no rules on that. It's your park. Do whatever you want. Here, let's use this. Why not? And I'll just add a roof on this thing. Oh, sweet. I can keep on the modern uh, filter. There we go. And uh, you know what? Why not add a bit of flowers in the front? I like that idea. Guests do have... Uh, they have an opinion on what your park looks like. But they don't have a specific opinion. It doesn't matter if it looks stupid. As long as there's scenery, they will enjoy the place. 
if there's no scenery, they're gonna be like, oh, there's not a lot of attention to this place, this sucks. Um, so yeah, as you can tell, this is really hard to put, uh, to raise a lot. Let's, let's add a bit of light, at least some lights on the building. Oh, yeah, that's right, it's in here. The lights are actually also in the building section, by the way. Um, here, let's do this. And it doesn't need to be associated in the... Oh, see, that's, that's a big jump already. It was like 4% in, in a single jump. Um, the scenery doesn't have to be attached to this particular building. Uh, anything that's around it will have an impact. But yes, scenery is kind of a big deal. Uh, let's go here. Let's make it like this as well. I like these uh, little windows. Also, I'm building through the roller coaster supports, which is ugly, but eh, whatever. I don't care that much. So basically, I'm mirror mirroring this building right now. There we go. And we are now at... Uh, well, I guess this is a bit too far. Oh, no, there we go. It just jumped. Another 4% up. So, don't try to reach 100%. You can if you want. Um, if you actually want to reach 100% on this, I suggest building up. If you build higher up, it's easier to reach a higher rating on this. Um, something that's also important, the capacity and the perk. Right now, it doesn't really matter, but it helps to give some stuff for your staff. We are making profit, so it should be good. Um, now, let's have a look at this. Is there any... still on very low. Okay. Oh, well. <laughs> It's getting good already, honestly. It's at it's a very ugly park, but it's getting better. We are making money. Uh, we can start the research. So let's have uh, the ATM machine. Where is it? Restaurants. I think it's not available right away. We will need a first aid, that's for sure. We will need a... Here, let's give, let's put a gift shop, uh, a gift shop, and the ATM machine will come after. Uh, small attraction. Oh, small attraction. That's a, that's a big one. Here, let's uh, make it. Uh, let's research it quickly. That one. Uh, small attraction in this case is the crane machine, and I'm gonna show you once I got it. Meantime, I also want to decorate the entrance. That's just my personal taste. You don't need to decorate your entrance, but you can. Uh, here, why not? Why not use an arc right there? Let's put it in Stuco. Stuco, Stuco, my best friend. Stucco is a highly flexible material. Uh, you can change the color. There's a ton of different, um, like these, you know, little finish everywhere. Uh, you can do so much, so much pretty stuff in Stucco. It's surprising how high of equality this crappy material can look like. Like, don't underestimate the value of Stuco. Now, in this case, I'm not really making anything out of it. I'm just making it quickly like that. You'll see. 
Experiment with it, you'll have fun. I can promise you that. Mm hmm. Okay. Here, I'm just gonna do this then. Uh, isn't that what I just built? I think I. Ah, there we go. I wasn't on the right height, that's why. There we go, and uh, let's have some roof on this. Gonna change the color. Uh, what's your color? There we go. Here, let's, let's grab this one. Okay, this should work better. Yeah, there we go. Uh, by the way, stucco can be combined very easily with smooth concrete and lime plaster. If you don't want this texture on your roof, uh, that's rough concrete, that's smooth concrete. There you go. You know, just need to change the color. Look at that, it blends in. There is a bit of a different shading though because it's a different texture, so you'll have to adjust just a tiny bit. There we go. So yeah, you can have fun with Stuko. Having fun with Stuko. Um This is still gonna be very low. What's my research at? Let's fast forward a little bit. And the reason why I want to show you small attractions is that's a big money maker, but you need to set it properly. Very important. <laughs> it's already starting to look like a park, even though it's horrible. It still, it looks like an actual park. There we go. Also, do I have access now? No, I don't. Ah, eh, whatever. I could start another research. I'm not gonna bother. Not for this tutorial video. Uh, the crane machine. So, you go here. Uh, where is it? Where? There it is. Which one was it? I actually don't remember. <laughs> Restaurants. Small attraction. There it is. Okay. So, the claw crane machine. Place it wherever you want. Whatever. Uh, people surprisingly enjoy these things. So, the first thing to note is the maintenance. Uh, these things almost never break down. You do need maintenance on it. Go for 45 minutes. 45 minutes on a claw crane machine is good. I, in my other park that I was showing at the very f start of the video, I had one. It never broke down a single time on 45 minutes. So that should be good. Now, the finance, you'll see, you know, there is a monthly running cost, so you do want to make profit with this. Ticket, uh, item for sale. For some reason, the chance to win is at 50% by default. What this means is, you don't make any money. You will lose just as much money as you will gain money. It's stupid. <laughs> so, um, if you read the description, it's uh, people uh, are willing to pay more if the chance to win is higher or lower. I find that 25% chance to win works great with 5 and 10. 5 dollar 10 cent. So that those right there are my number. You set these numbers with of course the maintenance and you will be making profit. Not a ton of profit, but you will be making profit. So if you build the crane machine, that's a good money making item early in the game especially. Uh just make sure to set these numbers. Very important. Uh, yeah, there you go. 25 minutes. 
So, there we go. And one more thing before I end this. Uh, obviously, I could start building small rides now because we're making money. Don't forget to do your research. Don't forget to pay back your loan. Your loan. Uh, research by default will be on the minimum price, which means it's gonna take a bit longer to research, but it's also gonna be... It's gonna cost you less in the long run. For loans, it's the other way around. If you pay the minimum amount of money per month, you'll pay the highest amount of interest. So as soon as you start making money, you may want to put that higher up to pay less interest. It's also, uh, you can tell right now, the number of months remaining just jumped up. Ju just jumped up. If you happen to have enough money, you can instant you can instantly pay it. But, you know, sometimes it's easier to just raise the amount per month. Um, yeah, small rides, they work the same way as roller coasters in the stats, uh, operation, maintenance, finance section. Just gonna double check here. Yeah, there you go. The value has risen. Oh, there's another thing I'm supposed to tell you. I forgot about that. Um, so yeah, value of ride. Another thing that I forgot to tell you. The prestige. So as you just built your ride, it is brand new. People are very excited about it. It is worth tons of money. As the ride is in the green here, in the established zone, it is worth considerably good money this you can keep the same price in those two area there's it's 100% and 110% there's not a lot of difference if you play on harder difficulty by the way it is 105% instead so that's a small detail there that makes that actually makes a difference um, then you go in this aging and old area and reviving all of this you'll want to um, your ride will reduce in value and a good uh, general rule of thumb is reduce your price by 15 percent throughout that old period then once you hit classic you can go back to maximum price so you can just note down what's your best price as soon as you establish the ride early on like right now, I believe the price should be good. Yeah, should be good. Uh, so, this should be the correct price for now. Um, as your Q scenery rating goes up, you might be able to rise that price even more. Uh, then take a note of it and reduce 15% during that section. Put it back to the maximum once you hit classic. And if you're not sure, always just click on the people in line. Always start at the start of the line because people that are here might have an old thought. They didn't pay the same price that you just adjusted. So always, you know, you adjust the price, you check for new people that just came in. That's how you adjust your price overall. Um... And yeah, the last thing that I wanted to tell you about staff management. Staff management. Um, you'll see the training level and the happiness. The happiness is people are not very happy most of the time, especially when they are a trainee. Uh, they don't like it. They need more info. Uh, if you look at these thoughts, you can tell if, you're d if everything is well adjusted. Um, people that has a high workload, when they're just a trainee level, they they, they really hate it. Uh, so what, what you want to do is you give them training. Every time that you give them training, the pay will need to be adjusted. They're not going to be happy with a uh, beginner salary when they're no longer a beginner. Now, the, the the staff will actually go in training as soon as they go on breaks.
they don't just instantly drain. But yeah, uh, you can still give the rays right away. Uh, the very good way of doing this is you give them training and you give them a $10 raise. Doesn't matter which type of staff, everyone works with that same amount. Give them training, $10. This will give them uh, just this, being on second level, usually is, and, and that $10 raise, usually is enough for their happiness to max out and stay maxed out. Uh, and you can follow that rule all the way to maximum training. If you're not sure, just look at this. Oh, my paycheck is huge. Well, that's because he didn't get his training yet. Like, that's a good, that's a huge paycheck for entry level, you know. Uh, but yeah, just look at the thoughts if you're not sure. And you'll see if something's wrong. Uh, when they say, you know, oh, things are okay, I guess. It just means there is nothing special. But yeah. So look at these. Pay attention. Uh, don't forget to train your staff. It's, it's a big thing in the game. Oh, and I forgot. Another thing I forgot to tell you. Security. Uh, I did hire a security guard. But you'll need security cameras. Now, how to place your optimal security cameras is a big thing. Uh, because security cameras have a running cost of $50 per month. It doesn't sound too big, just $50, you know, especially when you have like thousands. But with the amount of security cameras that you're going to put, it makes a big impact overall. So you want to have as much security camera as you need, but not more than you need it. So, 15 meter radius, it tells you right there in the name. Uh, what is 15 meter radius? Well, you can tell with the terrain tool. 15 meter. This is a 15 meter. Uh, in this case, I believe it is in diameter. Uh, oh, it's radius. Okay. So... This is a 4 meter wall, right? This full wall is therefore 20 meter. And as you can tell from the point of my mouse to the edge of the circle right there, that's 15 meters. So you can actually use your uh, terrain tool to figure out where is 15 meters. Uh, I used that in the past and I created a little something here in the blueprints. 15 meter radius. What do you mean fail to load? Okay, that was weird. That never happened ever. I don't know why it did that. Um, so, as you can tell, the small circle here is 15 meter. The big circle is 30 meter. So, what I usually do, I, you know, I just made this very crappy tool. The, the circles are not even even. It's, it's, it's very, very quickly done. You don't need that at all. Uh, so, here, let's go back in security camera. So, what I'm doing with this is I'm going to put, for example, one camera right here. And then, I'm not sure where I need my second one. So, I do this. I just hover. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to need... This covers all the way there. 30 meter is my blue line. So, I'm going to need one security camera right here. There we go. So, then I go back here. And this way you'll have your entire park covered very easily, very quickly. Keep in mind, this is to catch the thieves. The thieves. Um, they, the thieves, they don't go in rides. They go all the way to the entrance of the ride here, and then they turn around. They don't care about running rides. They will also, just like any other guest, be attracted with things. So they won't go through the exit of a ride either. So all of this you can just ignore. In this case, I just need to cover this area. So, blueprint. 
Also, I'm sorry for the order that I've talked throughout the video. I know I'm a bit all over the place. Sometimes I forget things. I even have notes and I'm forgetting things. I guess that's the artist's mind. Uh, but yeah, I hope you still enjoyed and learned a bunch of stuff. Um, overall, the price rights is probably the most important part. Staff management also, if you don't want your staff to be angry and leave. Make sure you have extra staff for your, uh, for your stalls so that they are not empty at any point. I seem to really be needing a lot amount of food I might if I was to continue this park I would actually build a second food stall at this point because I do believe we have missed sales yeah there we go so we could actually do a second pizza pen right here for example this one I believe is working fine yeah I would also build a second cosmic cow milkshake cosmic cow milkshakes uh, probably I would do like some smaller rides, something like that, and then another set of uh, food stalls and drink stalls and bathroom. And at that point, I would probably have the ATM machine. Um, so yeah, ride prices, ride management. Like don't forget, you know, operation, maintenance, very important things. Uh, you should not need any refurbishment ever by the way it should be fine uh, your price here of course don't forget to adjust 30% up from the default price staff buildings make sure to adjust your capacity I like to use staff entertainment because if you have lots of staff they get bored um, if you see that people has a high workload usually you want to hire more staff. And uh, yeah, crane machines. That little thing right there. Don't forget these things. Uh, decorate. Always decorate. Put your security cameras. I think that's it. I think that's everything. So, um, yeah. I'm glad that you watched this video. And uh, wow, this is really bad. I really wish I could show you with a better track simulator rating. It has a huge impact on the price, I'm telling you. Huge impact. So, um, yeah. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching. I know I'm rambling a lot. But, yeah. Have fun. Experiment. Don't be afraid. Don't forget to pay back your loan. See you next time.